What's happening, troops, and welcome back to another video. Today, <clears throat> today I'm giving the pre-match post pundit podcast of what I've made of the Rangers versus Hovenstein game at the Tony Macaroni Arena. Um, obviously, well, obviously due to the COVID nineteen situation and the coronavirus rules and stuff, fans aren't allowed near the stadiums and aren't allowed in the stadiums as of yet. Um, so. I've watched it on TV and I watched the full match and I've brought down a few key points of what I've seen in the match. Um, during the first half, Rangers had much possession on the ball and obviously were chasing it down. That was for the first five ten minutes. Um, obviously, we're getting men behind the ball and constantly making it difficult for Rangers to pressure and to break them down um, in the attack. Uh, the first five minutes, it was the first five ten minutes. It was fifty fifty with the possession. Each team were on the ball at key stages of the match. Um, the first ten minutes, Livingston were getting men sitting behind the ball, trying to make it difficult for Rangers to attack. Um, good defending from corner goals and young boy Jack Hamilton was away with the ball for Livingston. There was a one-on-one -on -one situation as I think it was Philippe Hollander um, made, a, made a mistake and there was a way one-on-one -on -one with John McLaughlin and Conor Golson managed to get a foot to it before he took the shot. Um, good tempo from Rangers controlling the ball and controlling the style of play in the first half. Um, there was a handball at one stage from um, John Guthrie the Livingston centre back Ryan Kent took a shot from outside the box with a lot of pace and uh, the power and the, when it was driving towards goal it hit off John Guthrie's foot and accidentally hit his hand in the penalty area which wasn't a penalty in my opinion um, the first 15 minutes of the match Rangers had 79% 79 of the possession to twenty nine percent, that just shows how much Rangers actually dominated that match. Um, Wolverhampton put with one of a back six at times to prevent Rangers from getting into space to create a goal. Um, excellent defending from John Guthrie to prevent Morelos to get a head to the ball as Tavernier crossed it in. As it was going for Morelos' head, that's where it was aimed to target. And John Guthrie managed to get a header to the ball before it fell to Alfredo to make it 1 0 Rangers. And yeah. Morrison defending deep in the numbers and denied giving Rangers any space. That was throughout the whole 90 minutes. The Livingston back defence was absolutely unbelievable. They played tremendously, and all credit to Gary Holt and Gary Holt's team. They played absolutely tremendous against Rangers today. Um, Robinson getting the ball up the pitch at times, as well as defending deep and defending back to prevent Rangers from getting attacked. Um, Barisic, at times, Borna Barisic, Rangers number 31, was making it difficult for for the Livingston defenders by get, by getting forward and helping out the Rangers attack as another option on the left hand side of the park. Um, Livingston are so hard to be at home. It's so hard to be at home, especially at the Tony Macaroni Arena. They only conceded eight goals at home last season. Hence the reason why they had such a high finish because they're absolutely tremendous on that artificial pitch at the Tony Macaroni Arena and the tactics and everything that they've got was a bit worth, worth playing at home they're just tremendous and hardly any teams can break them down and manage to score which was shown again today um, Nicky Devlin and Pittman were working well on the left hand side of the park against Borna Barisic um, the first half starts it was 22% to 78% possession with 8 attempts to 0 for Rangers and 0 shots on target. 
Um, we'll move on to what I've seen in the second half there. Alan Forrest had a chance for Livingston to make it 1 0 in the first 5 10 minutes of the second half. Um, if, Rangers, if Rangers had won the match today without dropping points, they would have went 11 points ahead of their Glasgow rivals, which would have been good for Rangers. Um, Rangers were being were more attacking in the first fifteen minutes of the second half, and making it more difficult for the ones in back line. Um, during during the second half, there was a sloppy pass from Ryan Jack to Ryan Kent in the middle of the park and gave Livingston an attack to go forward and try and score a goal. Um, Alfredo Morelos got a yellow card in the 64th minute after the referee blew a whistle and he was being he started on the referee which is usual for Alfredo in, in games. As you've, if you've watched Scottish football, you probably will know about that for last season, to be honest. The amount of red cards and yellow cards that Alfredo got. I think he had something like 13 red cards or something last season. Um, Rangers had more possession of the ball and getting it up the park in the second half. And they, were a, they were a different outfit in the second half, to be honest, than what they were in the first half. Um, Livingston clearing the ball from Rangers attack at every opportunity that they could. Um, Livingston defended superb, not giving Rangers space in the 18-yard box throughout that match. And I think in the last 15-20 minutes it was a high boot from Philippe Hollander on former Rangers midfielder Jason Holt. And um, that's it guys, yeah. Um, Really, to be honest, and a Rangers fan, I'm a Rangers fan, right? So, in a Rangers fan's point of view, I would say that there's n that's no excuse for Rangers. Rangers. Rangers have already spent 12 million in this transfer window. We've brought in Kimar Roof, Cedric Eaton, um, John McLaughlin, Balogun. We brought in a few good players, a few key players for this season coming up. And if we if we are to stop stop Celtic for getting ten in a row, we need to stop dropping points at easy games like this, like today. Um, yeah, we're on ten points and only top of the league by goal difference. So we Hibs are on minus plus five and Rangers are on plus seven. Um, the way that Rangers play today. Rangers should have won that game by far and there's no excuse for Rangers I don't care what anybody has to say people might disagree with me here but Rangers have to be winning every game at every opportunity not dropping points this season if they're trying to stop Celtic from getting 10 in their own winning 55 um, special, that's a, another excuse that would probably get made up for Rangers is all the artificial pitch it's nothing to do with the artificial pitch. If you're a professional football player, you should be able to play on the artificial pitch. You should be able to play or play on any surface and get three points. It's well, uh, nothing, nothing against Livingston, but uh, uh, and against teams like Livingston, St. Murray, Hamilton, we should be winning three points there every week. All credit to Livingston today. Rangers didn't, didn't even deserve to win that match today. All credit to Livingston. Livingston were the better team from the start to the finish and yeah guys the man of the match today was John was Livingston centre back John Guthrie all credit to that boy he played absolutely tremendous key he done well for that team in key points and yeah all that we need to do now is reflect on what happened today watch the game back Go back into training tomorrow morning up at Auckland Howie and f look forward and focus to the next game and try and get the three points and bounce back from this. Feels like we lost today, but the draw, um, absolutely disappointed and I'm not even going to def not even going to defend Rangers here to be honest with you. Um, 
so yeah guys that's it um, came on roof didn't make an impact and neither did he then when they came on in the second half and oh um a shout out to Kusar Ada who used to play for Queen's Park. He's not he signed a contract with Robinson and he he was quite good when he came on the park for Robinson in the game. Um Yeah guys and that that's it from me and I shall see you guys in the next video. Me being Connor, this being the Scottish Football Pundit Podcast. You you being your subscribers, you've been the viewers. As per usual guys, give me a like, give me a comment down section below, subscribe if you're new and give me a shout out to all your friends, family, dogs, cats, a lot. Try and make this channel grow guys because there's a lot more content to come and this channel is only going to get better. Me, me be myself, Connor, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out.